Now then, 10 years ago, this month for the first, was the first uh, same-sex marriage took place in the UK. And to celebrate that milestone, Tom Allen is throwing one couple the wedding of their dreams, with the help, of course, of some celebrity pals. Yeah, it's brilliant. And it's all part of his brand new BBC documentary, which airs tonight. But before Tom tells us all about it, let's find out how the couple coped when Oti Mabusi put them through their paces during their first dance rehearsals. Up, up, up. Ah, oh, that's it. Let's do that like we are human. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll be lucky at this rate to get the Macarena out of them. Thank God somebody here has a bit of rhythm in their bones. Right, right, yeah. Hey, hey, down. Up. Now, they will make you proud. They better. They will. I think they will. Yeah, fine. I'm going to have a helicopter on standby. <laughs> Very good. And Tom joins us now. Hey. Nice to be here. Thank you for putting me on after a segment about sewage as well. Oh, well. I feel very, very, <laughs> you know, very welcome. Sometimes. Very charming. Sometimes it just works. Just works. Dovetails perfectly, yeah. doesn't it? Dovetails. Um, but, but Tom, what I will say, right, because you're always so wonderfully dressed in, in wedding attire, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, did you ever manage that you'd be, did you ever imagine, sorry, that you'd be planning them? Um, well, I am quite bossy and I like to tell people what to do. So um, <laughs> it did, did, does sort of suit me. Uh, yeah, it was a great honour to get asked to kind of help coordinate this wedding. We only had three months to put it together. <laughs> Luckily, we called on the help of some friends I have, people like Sophie Ellis Baxter, John Waite, Oti Mabusi, as you saw. And, um, and they all came together to help uh, Adam and Dan have what seemed to be a lovely day. Mm -hmm. And so it was a real treat, a real... A lot of pressure, though, when it's someone's happiest day of their life. Um, Tell us a bit more there. about the two grooms and actually why There's... it was so special for them to be taking part in this in the day. Well, they're such lovely guys, Adam and Dan, and um, you might recognise Adam from the Pottery Throwdown. Very talented. And um, they both are. <laughs> and um, very clever. Very clever. Very. And um, Adam has a, a... He had an accident when he was younger and he, um, he has sort of, he might lose a lot of his memories when he gets older. So it was very important to him that he had a, a wedding day mm -hmm. that they could compile photographs of and, and memory, memory aids of, uh, for, so that they could kind of reflect on a happy day. So it was a big, big deal. And it sort of made me think a lot about, well, the idea of marriage is that one of the things that affords every couple is, is next of kin mm -hmm. um, relations. So if, if, someone, if one of you does get ill, yeah. you are able to access a hospital uh, and see your, your next yeah. of kin. Um, but before marriage was there, and before, certainly before civil partnership, um, the, it, that wasn't an option. So there were a lot of same-sex couples who'd lived together for years and who weren't, you know, their, their, their partner wasn't allowed to see them in their dying moments. Yeah. And so very, very sad in that regard, you know, very, so that's what felt very important. But, but, but it's wonderful that you, that you speak about it so well in the documentary as well, because, you know, you speak to people who are huge in the fight for equal marriages in the sense of you, you speak to activists, oh, Peter yeah. Tatchell and yes. Sandy Toxvig. I mean, oh, yes. what was it like, you know, catching up with them and talking about well, it? Well, always extraordinarily uh, moving when you think they, someone like Peter Tatchell has committed his whole life life yeah. to campaigning for equality and for, for for social justice and he's an amazing person and um and you know and and um Lynn and Sarah were a couple we we followed who who turned up at um, Westminster Town Hall with their wedding dresses on saying we want to get married knowing yeah. that they wouldn't be allowed to uh, back in the I think the late 80s early 90s and um, people who'd campaigned for a long time when it wasn't cool it was very much people were on the outside if they did things like that and you know their work I, I really wanted us to honor in this documentary I because think, it's not that long ago yeah I think that was the the interesting part I found about the documentary and what I loved about it is that you mix that yes you're throwing you're this wedding planner and celebrating but actually the history and the learnings as yeah. you went along. Thank you for saying that. That was really interesting to me too. I think we tried to bring the, the lightness as a frame uh, to, to access the kind of more serious side of it. Yeah. And, and really, you know, uh, the, the work that those people did was incredible because you look at footage from 10 years ago yeah. when, the, when it was being debated in Parliament and it was completely fine at that point for politicians to stand up and pronounce on what they thought same-sex couples should be allowed yeah. to do, which I think now, happily, we'd sort of, we'd be, we'd balk at because you'd go, well, everybody should be allowed to get married, surely. And yeah. happily, so many of us have, have got friends and family who are in same-sex marriages. Yeah. So, but I didn't want, I wanted to show it because I don't think we should take it for granted. It's not that long ago. Yeah. Absolutely. That, um, things have changed like that. And so, and as a thank you, I suppose, an acknowledgement of all the work those people put in. And, and for me, what was most fascinating about it was 
to get it across the line, what basically had to happen was all the different activists and campaigners and then the politicians from all different sides of the political divide, whether they were Conservative or Liberal Democrat or Labour, came together and, and, got, and got it across the threshold yeah. and brought it into law. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, in this age of quite polarised politics, quite tawdry politics, we're all quite exhausted by politicians yeah. who seem, I don't know, they seem sometimes to be a bit cynical, dare I say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you know what, it doing really something positive is. And it made a, a, a massively positive It is a great change. documentary, I have oh, to say yeah, that, thank so you. thank you for even doing it. And while we've got, got you here quickly, yes. we need to ask you about The Apprentice, because obviously oh. you host The Apprentice, well, you're fired. Who do yes. you think is going to go all the way? Well, it's not for me to say, oh, look, that's me. Um, it's not for me to say, of course, but I would say um, there's a wonderful uh, uh, task tomorrow, where, which is TV shopping. Mm -hmm. um, where they oh, have that's one of your favourites. That's actually my favourite. And um, because they basically, you know, they have to stand there trying to sell a lawnmower while someone's shouting in their uh -huh. ear. It's very, it's very, people don't realise it's, it's difficult. It's got an earpiece in, Roman, it's difficult to I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> right now, someone's telling you, move him on. Yeah. He's talking too much. Yeah, exactly. He's not taking yeah. a breath. Someone put the wastewater someone, back on. Do that thing about sewage again, Roman. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Tom, thank you so much. It's been wonderful for you. And uh, good, good, luck, good luck with the documentary oh, thank you. tonight. And, thank you. And, and you can watch uh, Big Gay Wedding with Tom Allen at 9 o'clock on BBC One and iPlayer. And The Apprentice, You're Fired, is on straight after the main show tomorrow at 10 over on BBC Two. And also yeah. I want to say, Alex, congratulations on your artist Tom award. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, brilliant. Oh, oh, you got oh, me there. Oh, so were you going to say that? Were you going to say that? We'll stop talking oh, about that, Tom. I was hosting it. And you much. weren't there. I know. You had to I'm get sorry. it. Yeah, well, no, yeah. it's great. Tom, it's we great. have I'm, a show. I'm I know. <laughs> but it's right, it's still to come, but we're, we're going to be celebrating. joined <laughs> by Spencer Matthews, Sonali Shah, and Christy McGuinness, as they're going to be telling us all about their life changing pilgrimage across North Wales. Yeah. yeah. Now, many Christians embark on a pilgrimage as a show of faith. And in just a moment, we're going to be joined by three people from very different religious backgrounds who've done just that. Let's take a look at their epic journey. Going on a pilgrimage can be a renewing and transformative experience. Here we go. That is beautiful. Now, seven well-known personalities commit to an immersive spiritual journey of their own. They're following the North Wales Pilgrim's Way, a path linked by churches echoing tales of long-forgotten Celtic early Christian saints. They'll be challenged emotionally. I associate this breeze with praying at my mum's grave and changed by life-affirming experiences. We did it! Look at that! The pilgrimage has been insane. And Spencer Matthews, Sonali Shah and Christine McGuinness join us now! <laughs> So, I mean, guys, two weeks in a group with people uh, who all have different views and religious beliefs. I mean, Christine, you, you've said that you're, you're not necessarily religious. So, I mean, what, what did you take away from this whole experience? Oh, wow, so much. Um, getting to know everybody else, understanding other people, other religions. I think one of the best things was making friends. But for me personally, it was not being so scared of dying anymore. That was something that was really keeping right. me awake at night. I've got three young children. Like health anxiety? Yeah, it was just the, the worries and concerns as a parent, of course, you, you worry about not being around to look after them. But for me, it was really taking over my mind. And whilst I was on pilgrimage, I learned to just live in the moment and enjoy the present and just embrace the right now. And that was the best thing that I took away from it. That's beautiful to hear. And yeah. Sonali, you actually needed to be persuaded to go on the pilgrimage. Tell us why. My instinct was to say no, because I grew up in northwest London, which is this melting pot. So I knew lots, well, I knew about all religions yeah. because everyone on your road is of a different faith or culture. So you knew everyone's holidays, you knew where to get the good food on a certain day of the week, all of that. I grew up in a Jain family, but I'm not really that religious. For, I mean, I had a Hindu wedding because that was the priest available that was willing to get on a ferry on the south coast of Kenya. So, you know, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was practicing. Mm -hmm. And then I spoke to my mum who said, well, maybe you're a modern Jain or maybe what you do, the, the, the tenets of Jainism, the main thing is non-violence and she's mm -hmm. like you've never touched fish or meat you really look into all these things maybe you're th maybe the way you're living your life is already how a modern jane should and maybe you need to think about representing people she sort of said get out of your own head yeah and just think about the bigger picture of who you might represent out there yeah it's fantastic and i mean look you can see see you guys there sometimes there's some 
big discussions, but oh, you yeah, get some so big... That's, that's me laying into Ishan, who was not yeah. proud, proud of how he was climbing. Well, <laughs> what, what's so great is that you actually got some, some answers to some of your own questions. Spencer, I know you say that you're not necessarily a practising Christian, but, but you, you yourself got those answers. Um, I went in with, with big questions like, like, you know, most people. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm not a particularly religious person. I'd, I'd classify myself as, as spiritual, I, I would say. Um, I went in yeah, no, with no, a curious no, mind a real to, to, to kind of grow and understand much. more about yeah, different religions, I suppose. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, incredible. I suppose that's such the interesting thing about the programme. It's the learnings that you go on. And, Christine, I know in the final episode, you took part in a tradition that helps you forget about your problems or your worries. And I know you've gone through a lot of change in your life. You speak about that during that episode. To tell us more, did this help? Absolutely. I mean, there's been so many changes in the last couple of years. My whole life has, has turned upside down and, you know, some good, some bad. I think post-diagnosis has been quite a journey on its own, mm -hmm. still getting to know myself. And pilgrimage really, really helped. It gave me that time out to just be with myself quite a lot, which is something I've never really done before. Yeah. And at the end, it was... It was the visual side of the, the let and go that I absolutely loved. We kind of put all of our worries and thoughts into some pebbles and we had them blessed by a priest and we left them on the beach to be washed away by the sea and I was just, like, delighted to get rid of all of those Aww. worries. It was lovely. Uh, <gasps> and, Sonali, that was an important moment for you, right, as well? Very moving. I didn't realise it would be because I didn't come into this pilgrimage looking for any answers. I just really like walking and talking. Yeah. It was as simple as that and was told by my mum to do it so, you know, you don't defy her. But actually what I realised is that if you have anything unresolved, you might not n know that... I wrote Dadima on there because I lost my grandmother over... Um, the period of lockdown and none of us could get out to Tanzania to see her or say goodbye and I didn't realise that was quite unresolved, that not having closure. Yeah. So I think this process gave me that closure and as it turns out, pilgrimages really work. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I feel like it's just so beautiful hearing yeah. you all speak about what you've gone for on the show and what it's done for you, so thank you so much. You can watch Pilgrimage, the road through North Wales from this Friday at 9 o'clock on BBC2 and over on the iPlayer. Yeah, that's all we've got time for tonight. Big thank you to all of our guests. Have a great evening. See you later. Bye.